Diff lockers. Here are eight situations you should definitely not use your lockers. And situations where you should use your lockers. Oh my God. Using diff lockers in the right place at the right time is the ultimate game changer when it comes to four wheel driving. However, using the diff locker at the wrong place or the wrong time can lead to driveline failure. Example number one of when not to use them. High stress and high load situations at speed. Momentum is key when you're off-roading. However, too much momentum with a lot of load on that driveline and you're running lockers, that generally leads to a snap, a bang, a crunch at some point. It may not happen today, but it will happen one day. Just like this mischief, towing uphill under load on a steep incline. This cost me an axle and it ended my trip. It's always painful learning the hard way. The diff locker is the one single traction aid that can turn a stock four wheel drive from zero to absolute hero. Clearest day evidence. That rear locker makes this vehicle so damn capable. Outperforming big rigs with plenty of mods. Unless, of course, they also have diff lockers, like this one does. But if this didn't have diff lockers, a stock four-wheel drive with lockers, front and rear, would outperform this, believe it or not. How does a diff locker improve a vehicle by so much? And what does it actually do? I mean, even a stock vehicle can benefit so much from a diff locker. Diff lockers make up for the lack of contact with the ground. Uneven terrain, your vehicle may not flex much, just like most modern day full drives. For example, wombat holes. Lack of contact with the ground causes opposing wheels to slip. The lack of wheel travel exposes the flaws of the open differential. I mean, that's all good, but how does it actually work? It locks both axles and both wheels and forces them to rotate at the same rate. The vehicles on jack stands to demonstrate how a locker works. Right now, the locker is not in. If I hold this tire, John is still spinning on the other side. However, if the rear diff was locked, we would be fighting each other on which way to spin it. Right now, we can free play, we can spin it whichever way we want. The diff locker switch is on, but it hasn't engaged yet. Now it's in. Spin the tire, Jono. Right. Now, if I'm trying to lightly hold it, I can't. He spins it, this is gonna spin. Same here, so basically now right we're fighting each other. Locking the differential by activating the diff lockers forces the wheels to rotate no matter what. And why doesn't a standard differential do this already? A differential is designed for vehicles when they're turning to allow the outside wheels to travel further, rotate more than the inside wheels. Because think about it, when you're going around a roundabout or a traffic circle if you're in the US and you're watching this, the outside wheel is going to travel further than the inside wheel. If it didn't allow that, it'll be skipping and it'll be binding up your driveline. And that is why we don't use 4x4 or we don't lock the center diff on a vehicle when we are driving on the pavement or on the bitumen. But I think most people who are watching this know that already. But this is a great example. If you are driving on a high traction surface off road that is relatively smooth and flat, where you are not going to be lifting wheels and releasing the bind up, you will incur bind up, tire wear, and eventually one day that wear is going to break something in your drive line. Don't use diff lockers on high traction surfaces. On the flip side, for example, high traction uneven surfaces. A bit like rock step ups or hardcore four wheel driving, if you want to call it that, or a simple step up like this. Because you are climbing up and down and your wheels are going to be leaving the ground, you are releasing the bind up tension that's inside your drive line. Cast your eye on the passenger front, you can see it's releasing bind up as the wheel lifts up. If the wheel doesn't lift, the binding stays within the drive line. So it's fine to run front and rear locker. Just be a bit selective with the front locker. Many modern four wheel drives lack so much flex that they will lift wheels constantly. So they will release bind up tension all the time. Front locker and rear locker. Do you need both? No, you don't. You can just have a front, you can just have a rear, or you can have both. But what really matters is how you use it. For example, the front locker can also become a steering locker. If you're heading up a hill and it's got a bend in it, don't use the front locker for that. Behind me, there are four options. Only one of those options is a dead straight line. On that option, you can use a front locker on its own or you can use front and rear. The other lines, however, I would suggest you don't because 
the front locker is going to restrict your steering and when you get to the halfway point you're not going to be able to turn the vehicle and if you can turn the vehicle it's going to be stuck that said however use the front locker when necessary so you may come up to a section where the rear locker is not going to do it or you know it's not going to do it then engage the front locker but be prepared to disengage it immediately when you don't need it because they can take some time to pop out again as soon as you are out of the situation where you think you need the locker turn those lockers off and turn them off a little bit earlier before you are going to turn so they have time to disengage. Come on, hop out. There it goes, it's out. Once you've reached the top, you also gotta get down at some point. So what do we do downhill? For example, when I go down steep hills, first of all, I put it in low range. And if I need low range to get down a hill, that means it's really steep. In which case, I'll engage the rear locker because it's going to assist in keeping the vehicle dead straight. Every time, I'll put the rear locker on. Sand dunes, muddy hills if I'm in ruts. Any hill really, it doesn't matter on the terrain. Going downhill, engage that rear locker. But never, under any circumstances, engage the front locker going downhill. You're gonna tighten up your steering and you're gonna have less control. Do not do it. On top of that, you are adding all the extra bind up and weight on the front axle. Because you're already going downhill, gravity transfers the weight to the front axle. It's a weaker differential and you are really loading that up. Never ever use front locker downhill. So far it sounds like the rear locker is far more useful and important than the front locker. Not many people need the front locker. It's not necessary, nor is the rear locker. But if you have both, that is the ultimate of all traction aids. And if you got them, you'll love them, especially when bogged on the beach. For example, if you start bogging down, you can slowly creep and wiggle your way out in first gear low with front and rear locked. Without them, you'll need to get those recovery tracks out a lot earlier. Which brings me to the next use of lockers. For example, most factory lockers, if not all lockers, only activate when you are in low range, for low. However, some aftermarket lockers do allow you to put it in too high or four high and of course four low. I strongly suggest and strongly recommend you do not use a locker unless it is only in low range. Putting it in high range is not only dangerous at high speed, especially the front locker, could you imagine that? It also increases the shock load that ends up going through the whole drive line. If you are driving in low range, you can feather the clutch a lot more because you've got first gear low, second gear low. But if you need to start off in first gear high or second gear high and you're changing gears, you're shock loading the entire drive line a lot more. Only use lockers in four wheel drive low. On top of that, at low speeds. For example, heavy and sudden acceleration puts heavy shock loads on your drive line. Or you have a section, you need momentum, you need a bit of speed to get through it. I would not use the locker. The locker is there for controlled driving. It's all about control and it's all about going slow. Slow and steady wins the race. If you are using speed, you are using momentum, you likely don't need a locker. Lockers are for feather footing around on tricky sections. Speaking of loading up drive lines, for example, if you are stuck between a rock and a hard place, yep, just like I am right there, if you don't know what's holding you back and you're on a hard surface, get out, investigate how the vehicle is stuck. If it is wedged and it's not going anywhere, what you are essentially doing by locking those diffs you are putting more stress and more bind up. The result of that situation cost me an axle and a flange on the end of it. Twisted and I skipped a couple of teeth. Costly exercise. Another example of this, and many people do it, never use a front locker when you have full steering lock because you are putting immense pressure on your CVs, on your twisting axles. You're putting way too much stress on them. When it's a front locker, in a hard situation, at half lock to full straight. Anything beyond that, I wouldn't recommend it. There are many ways you can break your vehicle if it's wedged and you're using lockers. You are locking the bind up. You're locking the stress and torque within the entire drive line. There's no escape. Well, there is an escape and that's why things break. Speaking of things that are snapping, have you seen the video, 10 ways to destroy your drive line? If you haven't, it might be worth checking that one out. So far, we've spoken a lot about lockers, 
But I guess, who needs a locker? Instead of saying, who needs a locker or who must have a locker, what about who benefits from a locker? For example, anywhere, anytime when traction is low and you are in full low, low range. A locker can benefit in mud, scrabbly loose rocks, soft sand, anywhere where there's loose traction. Except for a particular situation. For example, if you're on a side slope of loose sand or loose rocks, you do not want to be using a diff locker there. Not a front and not a rear locker. The problem you'll have, the vehicle will want to slide downhill and that's because of gravity. Whereas if you don't put the locker in on a side slope, the upper wheel is going to spin more than the lower wheel. And that's because there's less pressure and there's less resistance on the higher wheel because all the weight's on the lower wheel. You put the locker in, you're gonna slide sideways. Think of a car doing a burnout with an LSD diff. Who will benefit from having a diff locker? I'm sure some of you have many questions. Which locker is best? Air locker, e-locker, factory locker, auto locker? Those are things that need a deep dive video on their own. If you would like to see that, comment down below and thanks for watching. It's time to go.